In this tutorial, I want to show you how to take a mask and then around the edges apply nice organic procedural edge noise that will just make all of your masks probably look 10x better. So let's dive right in. Let's start by dropping down a test piece of geometry. Why don't we go with the pig? Or no, let's go with rubber toy. That sounds good today. Let's dive right in here. We already have a base material on here, but what we're going to do is just clean everything off. So we can drop down a clean node and um, uncheck these boxes, but then just check the remove attributes and groups boxes. All right, so we've got this geometry, and let's say we want to now create two different materials. First, what we want to do is we want to specify how we want those two materials to blend. So right now, we just have a base piece of geometry, but then let's create a mask attribute to then specify as the geometry that we want to blend. So what I'm going to do is first drop down a subdivide node here. Okay. And then what I could do is drop down an attribute noise float node. And if we plug this in here, we see that it by default is going to create a P scale attribute. But what we want to do is just change that to mask. And if we middle mouse click here, we see we do have a point uh, attribute called mask. And if I click on the eye and then click on mask here, we see that we are generating a mask material where the red would be closer to a float value of one and the blue would be zero. And then the white is just in between. So if we up the amplitude, um, let's just set this to initial. Not sure. Oh, the reason we're not seeing any difference here is because usually in these uh, visualizers, the ramp range is set to auto. But if we change this to min ma max with one, we see that we've gone out of the one range. So we'll actually just keep that here and um, we'll remap it instead. So we can now kind of crunch the values. Okay. This will give us a more defined mask for us to see our blend. So now what we can do is just drop down a material node. And then what I'm going to do is actually just drop down a material network right here. I'll dive inside here and let's drop down a material builder node. We can just call this two mats. Jump back outside here and let's just make sure that we apply that material. So if we drag this over to the material and then backslash two mats, we've now applied our material. I'll drop down a null object here. We'll say out. We'll dive out into our object context and I'll just say, we'll call this prep. I'll drop down another geometry node and call this render, okay? Or maybe render toy to be more specific. And now I'll drop down a raw network here and we'll call this output. So we've set up our initial scene here. Let's just control click here to set up a camera based on that viewport angle. All right, very nice. And maybe we'll just hit a control on the area light here. Give it just a backlight for now. Go back to our camera view. So we'll call this our backlight. And maybe right here we'll call this our fill. And we'll drop that intensity down to about 0.1. Coming back to our camera here, We've got our lights, camera. Let's go into our ROP network and drop down a matra node. Okay, so now we can start previewing exactly what our render is going to look like. I wanted to start previewing just right out of the gate so we can get a baseline for how things are looking. And we see we're not really getting much because we haven't set up things totally correct. So we'll get an object merge, grab our prep out toy. Okay, so now that's coming through here, but also on the objects here, I want to get rid of candidate objects and just do render star underscore star. So that means it will only render the objects that are specified render here, no matter what. So right now we're not getting anything because our material is not set up properly. What we can do is drop down just a classic shader core, drop down a compute 
lighting and maybe we should pause our render right here real quick just so we're not loading every time we drop down a new node we'll plug these in properly and now when we refresh we should see our very first material here working out of the gate i'll just refresh okay so now the lighting is working properly on our shader what we could do is we could call this our um, red wet material and then maybe we'll call this our blue rough material then let's drop down a layer mix node and then a layer pack and what you can do is just plug in each shader into a layer pack node and then mix the two in order to combine the shaders okay so now that we have that set up what we need to do is drop down a bind and we had originally set up i'll pause this right here we originally set up a mask attribute so i will plug in our mask and we should see that that noisy mask area now will be generated here okay so now we see the two materials let's go back i'll pause this go back into our scene and maybe we add one more light um, maybe we'll call this our rim light make it a light down here maybe we'll make it five by five change it to disk go back to our render view maybe um, change it a little bit warmer maybe we will change the size of our fill light that a little bit bigger maybe just increase the intensity just a little bit and i actually want to get more of a rim light here so could also make our backlight a little bit bigger make it a little bit warmer as well and change it to disk and i'll go back to my backlight and let's try and push back over here what we could also do is just tear this off so then we can simultaneously control and then get the exact preview what we want for our lighting there we go much better right there getting that nice rim lighting here and then what we want to do set this to one 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 in order to get our parameters back here so that backlight here, we actually should make it maybe 10, size 10, maybe 20. Ah, 10's good. Just get some nice highlights there. The rim light could be maybe point one intensity as well. And our fill light, maybe we change it back down. Nah, point two is good. It's always good to dev these things in your proper lighting scenario as well, just because your lighting's going to play a huge role into making something look good. So we just want to make sure that we have a decent representation of our object here. All right, that's fine. Okay, so we've got our re render set up with our two materials, and we have that coming through it's not looking the best because we haven't dialed in our materials but that's okay we'll go back into here and i'm just going to hit control one on my keyboard so i can have a quick mark there and maybe control two here and then control three on my render so one if i hit one two three over here then i get a cycle between those very easily and I'll probably actually just change this to quick mark two. So we've been able to set up a mask properly and I'm gonna pause my render here. I'm gonna minimize that. Un uncheck that, go look through our camera. I'm just gonna turn on viewport lighting here. So we have this base mask, but what we could do is go back just to see this a little bit better. Maybe subdivide this by two maybe even three, just so we get a really defined mesh here. And with our mask, we can blur it. We'll just drop down an attribute blur, change the attribute to mask, okay? And maybe I'll change the blurring iterations to about five. So with our mask set up here, what's very common in different CG projects is usually even with these noises, we get, we get this material that we have this and and it's making these shapes but this gradient from from red to blue is kind of basic you know it's kind of just a a ramp that that doesn't really occur 
in nature. And so what we want to do is be able to create some edge noise in order to break that up. So if I drop down a point bop, I can then dive inside here. And what I'm going to do is just drop down an anti-alias flow noise, plug that into our position, I'm going to then output from our noise a frit range node. And the noise here actually exports from values of negative 0.5 to 0.5. So we want to fit that back to zero and one. And we are then going to bind our mask into this point bop. And I'm actually going to multiply it by two. And the reason I'm going to do that is because any of these values that are zero, if they're multiplied by two, are going to remain zero. But any, any of these values that are one, if they're multiplied by two, will go up to two. And then what I can do is drop down a subtract node and subtract from it the noise, which at the highest point is one. And so this noise is going to be subtracted here. And if we bind export, which means we're going to actually apply this operation to a specific attribute, and our attribute is mask, we see that it has subtracted here, but we want to actually clamp this back down from zero to one. Okay, so we haven't seen much change, and that's probably, probably because our noise is rather large. So if we export that here, we see our noise values are kind of large. So maybe we times this by 10, and we see that we have smaller noise. Maybe we bring the amplitude up to five, just so you can see this noise here. So now if we apply that operation to our mask, we see that our breakup is dramatically better, dramatically more organic. It looks so much better this way. And perhaps the amplitude is a little bit too much, but say it's toned down to two, then we really have just created this nice little procedural edge mask that will give infinite extra detail to all of your projects. So if we go back to our render view, we'll take a screenshot there, and I will now update this. We see the comparison from that to that is dramatically better. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that what you could do to refine this material. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, say you already have two really good materials. Now you've been able to blend them, but you've also been able to blend them and make sure that your masks have good noise. This doesn't have to apply just to materials. It can apply to a lot of different things, but I hope that it helped you out. And I use this operation all the time. So thanks for watching and we will catch you next time.